me see. What do you think was going through Chan's mind when he saw Antonio and Malia hug? Do you think he was shocked Antonio showed up? Absolutely. He knows what happened. He can't tell Malia that he knows what happened. But he's okay. Because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. see, now you got your hand on my platter and I told you about that. Well, He hasn't really told him about that. But he knows. Like He really ought to know Like that's his platter. Keep your hands up off them sandwiches. You know what I'm saying? So... Yeah, he was really upset. I think he was shocked considering like all of the mayhem that had erupted at that store. I think mean, he thought Antonio going to give it, you know, a little bit. He going he, he gonna to back up a little bit, you know, because um, it's too hot right now. And for you to show up, it was really bold because it was like you would show up a couple of days after the situation happened. That's letting me know that something in Antonio is escalating. His want for Malia is escalating as he's getting closer to walking down the aisle. Again, why? Because you're not calling off the wedding. See, Antonio has to protect his, his, his image, you know, and he's personified himself to be this really amazing man who's, you know, who's an attorney and works for a very prestigious law firm, lives in a really nice community, has a beautiful fiance who is a great front, a beautiful little girl. So it's like people really respect him for the things that he's doing and the work that he does within the community. Um, this is going to mess him up. So I think at this point, he's like, I clearly can't back out. So what I'll do is I'll marry April. I'll keep Malia on the side. I'm going to waste April's time a little bit. You know, then I'll say after like five or 10 years of marriage and a couple kids that it really just, I tried. We went to marriage council. We did everything to try to save it. We recognized it just wasn't going to work out. And then what he'll do is he'll marry Malia and be like, she was there for me. You know, when I was going through all of this with uh, April and trying to figure it out, she was a really good friend. She was always giving me good advice, telling me to order your wife those flowers, give her that bear, buy her that diamond necklace, um, take her on a vacation. And so once we separated, you know, I started thinking about giving love another chance again. And I saw Malia was still single, um, just sitting on a shelf waiting to be ravished. And I thought, why not you? <laughs> when the whole time you had ravished. <laughs> That's right. Ravished. <laughs> when you had her the whole time. <laughs> I'm sorry. When you had her the whole time, just sitting back waiting for you as a side chick. Because like, you're going to get promoted. Like, I know that that doesn't really always happen with a side chick, but this is Rose City, okay? We have to do things in a proper way. I have to go along with this wedding, or else everybody's going to be like, he's such a jackass for doing all of this just to like leave her in the end. So marry her, have a couple kids then break off with, you know, break it off with her and then find the new love of your life. And then say that Malia was your missing link. Say she's your rib that covers your heart. You know, give, give all that, that spiel. Everybody, that's so romantic. When we didn't know that she was really just a side chick waiting in the wings to become the main chick. All right. Who want a slice of that cake? <laughs> that was an interesting perspective. I love it. <laughs> Um, but I think I have seen this a lot over the years when, um, okay, so let me backtrack a little bit. So it, I, I feel like Antonio, he is escalating because he knows how Chan gets down, you know, and he's not scared. He's scared to a certain extent because he was nervous at the house, checking all the windows and, you know, he wasn't sure if his house had been bugged. So he was very careful about what he said, right? So you know that he knows a little bit of Chan's background and what he's capable of, but yet he's still so bold to show up here knowing that, you know, Chan, he, he knows what's going on. And this is Chan's woman now. This is Chan's family now, you know? And so I feel like we see this a lot um, well, I have anyway, where, um, friend, male friends, uh, when the female gets into a relationship with another man, they feel some type of way because they've been there. They were there first, you know, they were there longer. So it's like, no, I have a claim staked in this and I will supersede you because you just got here. And so I feel like we kind of see that energy in Antonio coming out, you know, in this scene, why he's still showing up. How come he hasn't backed down? He's just like, no, that's my friend. She, I, outside of everything else that happens, I was here first, you know, and he feels like Malia should stand up for him at a certain level, like, you know, to Chan, like, well, this is my friend. He's going to be here, you know? So I feel like a little, I, I feel like we're seeing a little bit of that energy. I don't know if you guys have seen that, you know, with 
male female relationships when you know new men come into their lives and they're just like uh who are you Uh uh-uh because i was here first and what i say goes and just like well i gotta respect because i'm in a relationship with this person you're my friend you know so you kind of have to back down even if it's a brother perspective you know it's just like well I respect what you say too, but you know, I am building something here also. I will consider it, you know, so I, I think that's what we're seeing here. So I don't know. Um, <laughs> sorry, I, I had a brain freeze for a second. Um, I think when he saw Antonio and Malia hugging, um, he may not have really, Chan may not have really tripped off that. You know, it wasn't like a passionate hug where, you know, the booty was being grabbed and the neck was being kissed. I mean, Uh people were having some serious hugs. You know what I mean? Uh It was just like, and he already knows what went down between them. He knows that Malia, you know, is backing off of him completely. So he don't have anything to worry about. Um, he may have been shocked that Antonio, like everybody else who knew what happened, um, would be shocked that Antonio decided to show up. You're like, whoa, bro, what you doing here? Don't, you just tore up the shop or <laughs> your girl just tore up the shop. <laughs> you know, like, what are you doing? Um, back up. So he may have been a little shocked, but definitely not like intimidated or nothing. He's probably like, no. what's this clown? It was an annoyance. Yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. So um, that's what I think. I was also, I, I forgot to end that with, um, I think he has some, uh, he's going to have some plans for meeting up with Antonio to let him know this is his territory now. Um, so that that's, uh, I forgot what the question was. <laughs> Went down that rabbit hole, but... <laughs> Yeah, he, he's definitely going to um, have a deeper conversation with Antonio later, I think. I mean, that look that he gave Antonio was like, okay. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he's definitely going to have to run upon Antonio because he's going to have to make it really, really clear. I don't care if y'all have known each other y'all's whole lives and y'all was, used to take baths as babies together. This ends now. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't care. I don't care if your family all went out to Martha's Vineyard together and y'all spent summers I don't care. Like Alicia and um, Kyrie said earlier, this is Chan's family now. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, Frank, you could be the front for the daddy, but I got all this locked up. Like, this is my family now. Okay? I'm the man of this family. I control the Williams. Right. Like, he, like, he on that energy, though, so... Yeah, there'll definitely be a, um, a business meeting that he's going to call mm-hmm. with Antonio. <laughs> mm-hmm. It's got to discover be. some stuff. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You gotta check them a little bit. Just a little. Let them know what's good. Okay, what's goody? What's Gucci? Okay, sorry. Um <laughs> Antonio revealed that he felt jealous at the sight of Chan and Malia kissing. Was no, even right to step in and cut him off. She called him out and reminded him of the mess they made. Yes, she did. And mm-hmm. praise God. As, you know, Malia, she should have been the one, you know. But I'm glad Eva stepped in and cut him off. Like, bruh, that'd be me, most likely. Like, mm-hmm. are you oh, serious? Yeah. Like, you if anything, you know, you need to grab a broom and, and help <laughs> clean up some shit back at the <laughs> shop. Like, are you serious right now? Um he, uh, so, of course, he's going to feel jealous, you know, um, instead of chasing after his girlfriend, you know, when she left, when April left, um, he sat, you know, he, he he still tried to go after Malia. And then he sat in his car and he's like, you know, who, damn, he's more worried about Malia than old girl. And I'm like, um, OK, so, of course, he would see. Uh, Chan and Malia kissing and he's going to feel jealous. I just don't think he should have said anything. He shouldn't even have been there. So, um, yeah, I'm glad that, you know, Eva was the one to step in and be like, yo, yeah. like, are we are we serious right now? Like, what are we, we doing? Find some, Yeah, go find some business. Go get your life. Right. Get out of here. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so. Yeah, I was all here for Eva as well because I think Malia was shocked and so she wasn't going to 
do the whole public, you know, display of outrage. And so she tried to, oh, um, thank you for showing up. Um, you know, and Eva was like, nah, bump that. What are you doing here? Didn't you already bring your hood rat, you know what I'm saying, to the store? And she tore up stuff like, do we really need a repeat of this? Like she just had to remind um, Antonio of what just happened. And I love that about her because sometimes I think as people, depending on where we are in that day or in that time or whatever phase we are in our lives or some moments you feel very strong and very outspoken and some moments you feel like you're barely crawling to get to the bathroom, right? And it's really nice when your friends who you're like, I'm talking about like y'all ride for each other. When your friend can look at you and be like, you're not going to say it. I'll do it. <laughs> your friend speaks up and you're not mad because you like, I needed to go there. I didn't have the energy to say that. So thank you for stepping in. Cause I like my girls, they, they can look at me and be like, what does Karina need in this moment? Either they like, I'm gonna let her do this. Cause this is what's needed. Or I'm gonna intervene. Cause this is what she needs. Like they know me, they, they know what I need and vice versa. I'll look at them and be like, I probably shouldn't say this, but this is what I was thinking. <laughs> so, um, Love the fact that Eva stood up to Antonio, let him know you need to leave. Like, bye. You know, I don't, I don't know what you're here for. Uh, don't you have a, a woman? Uh, oh yeah. So I'm just glad that uh, Eva showed up for her friend. You know, sometimes somebody else has to be the person to say it. And I think that where Malia was at, she was just like, I'm not going to say anything. I'm not going to make a, uh, um, I'm not going to make a scene. I love the fact that her friends aren't afraid to make a scene. I love the fact that even though they are from Rose City, um, Eva was raised right next to her with all of that Rose City standards and drama and foolishness. But she has definitely rejected a lot of that too. Like, no, we need to get busy in these streets, babe. We're going to get busy in these streets. Wendy has married into it, you know, because Wendy's like, mm, y'all, I'm not from this, uh, from this little social group. So y'all get handled really quickly. But Wendy wasn't there. But I am glad, you know, it's always as nice to have like your friends who who are there for you. They stand up for you. They'll fight for you. And I'm not like no punk because I can definitely handle my own. But it's something about when your friends are like, mm -mm, girl, I got this. <laughs> you come here. You know what I'm saying? Like me and my friends, we go there for each other. You know, um, like I said, because I'll be going at them kids. I'm like, if you don't leave your mom, get, get on the phone. Let me talk to you leave your mother alone you know what i'm saying it's like i'll boss up on one of y'all's children and i want y'all to do the same because like kyrie be like huh? she's like oh that little t huh uh, she's like I i'm gonna have to come over and i'm gonna have to hurt him she's like i hear him in the background talking i'm like i'm like you see that auntie monica will come you over here remember too. when you scared jael i think was it jael or Kyrie? one of my kids came in a room it was i think Kyrie um, think came over talking and you were like they were both standing there oh yeah you we're like mm -hmm. shut up i love you and i'm like and you were on speakerphone, so they didn't. Under <laughs> they were like, was, uh, Mom. I just wanted them to know that this anti black That's school means sure. business, That's and I love you, mm -hmm. but uh, I will boss up on the these kids because it's what they need, you know what I'm saying? Because y'all don't need to be harassing your mama. So, the next question. Oh, it's actually mine. Um, it says, Chris has a real problem. Yes, he does. He showed up at Malia's graduation trying to give her gifts when she would not take them. He became violent and stumped on his own gifts. When should Malia call the police? It is clear he will not stop coming after her. His behavior seems to be escalating quickly. You know, again, I struggle with like that wanting to call the police on stuff. You know what I mean? And I'm always like, I, I love my little stocking shows. And I'm always like, it has to usually get really bad for somebody to call the police. I, I don't know what that is. Cause it like, and I think because I do watch a lot of these shows about women who get stalked and when they do go to the police, these police officers tend to kind of laugh at them. You know, it's kind of like, I mean, you can't blame a guy for trying, can you? You know, I was like, yeah, well, he got mad and he threw it down. Okay, well, he was blowing off some steam. A lot of times women get um, invalidated, you know, when you do speak up, when you're like, hey, this is what's going on. And so um, one of the best things I've ever heard from, from a lot of these shows is that each time that this person shows up or they harass you, you have to get a special little book and you have to log it. 
And the sad part is for the courts to end up taking like a stalking case anywhere near serious, that person has to stalk you for like well over a year usually. Um, especially if it's not anything that's like violent where they're breaking into your house and you see them and they're standing there with a knife, that's a different story. But if they're just showing up places, following you, even if they try to run you off the side of the road, it's like, well, did you see them driving the car though? It was like his car, but you don't know. So I think definitely Malia should make a police report. I don't know if she will, but I, I definitely feel like it, it, it just gets to be a slippery slope with women because it's like, here you guys think, go again thinking everybody's following you, everybody's stalking you. You're not that attractive. You're not my type. I may not be your type. There's somebody out there who's crazy enough to be like, you're stalkable, you know? So, um, <laughs> hey, it's, it's, it's different strokes for different folks. Everybody don't like the same stuff, but there's some people out there who be like, you know what, Emily? You gonna get this business. So, um, yeah, definitely Malia should. I don't know if she will or not, because again, it feels that way. When women are going through these things, a lot of times you're telling your family, you're telling your friends about what you go through. People kind of have a, a tendency to kind of just like, you know, brush it off. I mean, I was telling people for years, I was experiencing those weird things with the candy and um, just, you know, just strange things happening at my house. People leaving me gifts and I didn't know who it was. And I still don't. And I told my whole family, they're like, that's odd. Nobody was ever like, call the police, you know? And I don't know if that's like a black thing as well. So I don't know. Like we don't really call the cops. We just, we handle our business. We just kind of stay ready. So I don't know. What y'all's thoughts? Um, oh, I was already um, unmuted. Um, yeah, his, his behavior is definitely escalating and he keeps showing up to where she's at from, you know, her apartment building to her graduation. And even though the cops don't do anything, they won't arrest him and, you know, give you that gratification. I say still go to the police and get something on paper. Um, it's sad that something has to happen to you, but at least you'll have something, a record like, yo, this motherfucker's mm -hmm. been bothering me in case either some happened to you or in case you have to defend right. yourself and end up killing this motherfucker. Sorry, excuse me. I'm just, <laughs> I'm mad at Chris right now. We're just passionate um, over here about self-care and protection. Super passionate. I was like, how dare this nigga? But um, no, it, in case you end up having, you know, to defend yourself and you end up shooting him or killing him. And it's like, yo, this guy has been, you know, if you if you got some on paper, right. a restraining order, um, a complaint, a couple of complaints, um, right. you know, just have something on paper. So they'll be like, OK, yeah, she was defending herself. Otherwise, it's going to be, mm -hmm. you know, a dead man and, <laughs> you know, your word. And they'll be like, OK, you're going to have to prove this. And then they'll I say, agree. even though they don't do it. They'll say that. They'll be like, oh, well, why didn't you go to the police if he's been doing this? You know, um, and so, yeah, yeah, get something on paper, at least, um, in case you end up taking him out or in case, God forbid, he end up taking her out because he is escalating. It's right. and he's showing up. Yeah. This isn't like phone calls. This isn't, oh, he's coming to work. This Negro is showing up at, you know, her he's anyways yes get some on paper um he i believe in calling the cop that's what they're there for allegedly um, you know you know do it. you know so get, 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 get a <laughs> and get a restraining order um they'll have to serve him somehow but get a restraining order and you know whoop whoop <laughs> i agree i think she that should. invitation is definitely key you know, yeah. documentation is really key. And like I said, if you watch those crazy shows that I like to watch, um, documentation is key. And, you know, the thing I always hate is when my son had a situation at school. Um, I think it was, was it last year or the year before? He was in middle school. So I guess two years ago now. Um, and a kid had, a, he brought a knife to school and he threatened my son with his knife. He didn't show it to him, but he told everybody he had a kill list. So I let the school deal with it. And later on, I was like, ask, like, hey, did you ever call the police? And they're like, no, we, we dealt with it internally. I'm like, somebody brought a knife to school and y'all didn't deal with it? Okay. Um, so when there was another situation where this boy was like, I'm going to bring a gun to school. And I said, okay. So I called the police and I told the school, I'm calling the cops. I said, because last time I thought you guys were dealing with that. I mean, there are certain policies in place that if you do these things, we have to notify law enforcement. And it wasn't done. 
So when I was talking to the police uh, officer about the first incident, he asked me, can I ask you a question? And I said, yeah. And he says, why didn't you report the first incident? I said, because I was under the impression that based on the Vancouver school district, that they were supposed to notify you. I didn't know I had to notify. I thought the school would have notified you. I'm, I'm, I've talked to the principal. I've talked to you know, counselors. I've talked to different people. And I was under the impression that they would have followed that up with the police just so there's that um, record on file that just in case anything does happen, then they can say, okay, this child had been showing signs of aggression. He had been um, threatening people. I said, but now I know that clearly I can't wait for the schools, that I have to be the person who reports it to the police department because they may or they may not. And he was like, oh, okay. <laughs> I was like, don't try to get on here and shame me. Okay, <laughs> don't do it. Go ahead, Carrie. Um, no, I definitely agree with both of you ladies. Um, and, you know, regardless if you feel like you're going to be believed or not, I think you should still, you know, call the police anyway, like Alicia said, to make sure there's that paper trail in case something happens to you or you got to take somebody else out, you know? And I definitely think Malia should have said something um, and called the police the first time when, when Chris showed that level of rage and, you know, he was even hitting himself and this bee's going to get it, you know, all that stuff. Like, that should have freaked her out enough to be like, whoa this is something different. This isn't just, you know, low key stalker. Somebody's just infatuated with me. This is something different, you know? Um, so like when, when you start feeling that scared feeling, that's when you need to say something and tell other people too, you know, because what if the police don't listen, then you need to have, you know, people that love you enough to be like, no, it's not like this, that we haven't heard from her in a few days. You know, that's weird. We need to go check on her and make sure she's okay. You know? Um, so yeah, I, I was thinking about when I uh, had to deal with that last stalker situation, you know, and I got to the point where I was getting scared, like, oh, he's going to do something to me, you know, um, because the amount of rage that he, he was showing and then, you know, breaking into my mom's back door and popping up in the window, popping out of bushes and you know, hiring other people to follow me. I mean, I was just like scared. I was I was afraid to go anywhere. You know, so definitely that's when I had to, you know, get the police involved, you know, calling, making false reports on me, saying I was abusing the kids, saying I kidnapped the kids, you know, just like all this stuff is just like, uh, uh, you know, so even if, it, it, if you. So, I mean, I knew a little bit about that story. I just didn't know that he basically broke into her mom's house like oh my god you know and i'm gonna just say that i think the the things that the, a lot of women endure and have to uh suffer with is really crazy and let you know how many people out here are really suffering from mental health disorders that maybe they don't know they have that's not an excuse but like you need to go and get some help because and more help needs to be uh, allowed it to people because this is great i did not know that he broke into your mom's back door you you, you want to elaborate on that <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm exploiting you but you can totally <laughs> edit that <laughs> I remember I told you when he came over drunk and he was trying to get in the house um, and he was like banging on the front door. This was like late at night, girl. And so I was just like, no, you can't come in. You're, you've been drinking. You know, the kids are in here. My mom's in here. I can't allow you in the house. And so, um, you know, I was like, I'll give you a pillow and a blanket. You can sleep. We had a little bench out on the front porch. I was like, oh, you know, you can sleep on the bench outside, but I can't allow you to come in here acting like that. And so um, he stayed out there. Um, um, he was like walking back and forth in the front, uh, the front yard. And so I was just like, well, okay, you know, and so I locked the door and I went back and laid down with the kids in the back room. And then I heard, I heard like some, some knocking and some banging and some sliding girl. I went in the kitchen and he had pried open the back sliding door. Um, and he was standing in the, in the kitchen and I was just like, get, get out of here, get out of here right now. And I was like pushing him out the back door, sliding it back. And he had wedged the something in the lock. Um, cause, cause, uh, we, when we lock the back door, we also have to slide a piece of wood there. So he had managed to, um, unlock, slide the something up with the lock, the latch up. And then he, I guess he was just pushing, pushing, pushing until the wood popped out. 
Um, girl, yeah, he was standing in the kitchen when I came in there. And I just freaked out, just like, oh, my God, you got to get out of here. And then he went around the house trying all the windows and stuff before he um, eventually got in his truck. And, you know, when the truck revs up, like they're hitting that gas, he was just like, Vroom! and girl, I was so scared. So I had called his brother and I was like, hey, check on your brother. I was like, I don't know what he's capable of. He's been drinking. Um, and then, you know, later that night they had picked him up on a DUI. Um later on so I found out he had been locked up so yeah so I was just like woof because and I, I was too scared to call the police then because you know I mean all the stuff that we're we're told not to do you know when we should be doing doing them um but and then uh after you know other things escalated after that and I was like I, I gotta get the police involved because this is just it's unhealthy. I can't live like this. You know, I have kids to, to take care of. And, you know, it, it was just becoming way too much. Um, and then I was afraid that he was going to do something to me because of the things that he was saying. And I mean, the ang anger just was through the roof. And I'm just like, I don't understand this level of rage. So, yeah, that was one incident. One of a few. Um you know, it's crazy because the way that we were raised, you know, you basically have to be bleeding out before the police is called. Like my mother, like, don't you, we thought somebody was ODing basically at the house and she's like, don't you dare. Uh, you want, we want to put them in the back of your car. Uh, you can, but uh, the, the police department will not be at my house. We, we, people look down on that sort of thing. I'm like, so, cause it's the look of it that looks so damn bad, right? We don't care. Somebody's nearly dying or about to be killed. Don't you call the police over here. So isn't that crazy? Alicia, what are your thoughts? Cause your baby, your face was just doing it. Oh, I was just reacting to, um, Kyrie's story. Um, I mean, yeah, the dude broke in the house. That, that's, that was all my expressions. I had already answered the question, but, um, that, you know, Chris is already, you know, he's escalating in that at this point, you know, she need to get some stuff on paper because, yeah, and uh, dudes are crazy. Dudes could be crazy. I know women can, too. You know, they, they do crazy stuff, too, and kill their dudes and stuff. But, I mean, a lot of dudes do not handle rejection well. Um there is mm -hmm. no okay. Have a nice day, blah blah blah. And like with Chris, you know, some yeah, have some a nice just life. I'll move on. It's mine, and he's like, you know, no, because I've been in love with you all this time, and you're acting like I don't exist, like I don't matter. And now he's following her and going crazy. You go. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. Back to my original thing. Um, even if the police don't do anything, get something on paper. Right. Get something on paper in case you know. Get you a piece of heat. Yeah, get you some protection. Yeah. Get you and, some paper. Uh, get you some heat. Get, make you a paper trail with all this, and document it too. Yeah, you make know. you a paper trail. Because mm -hmm. throwing a restraint or at somebody ain't gonna stop them from from gutting you. So you know, get you a piece of paper, write it down, what's going on, times, dates, locations, um, and get you some steel. Mm -hmm. Praise God. I am so sorry, Kyrie. I had you know this is the thing. It's like. We've been friends since, you know, 15, 16 years old, right? But there are still so many parts to your story that I'm learning. I mean, I knew about like the whole, you know, coming over drunk and wanting to sleep outside. Um, I'll just be out here, you know, because he was determined he was going to get you back one way or another. And because he was a person, you know, whose family has a name and well known and has a couple titles and, you know, it was just, it's crazy. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, I'm sorry. I, I didn't realize that he had broken in to your mom's house, you know, because at that point, I think if you would have just been like, just leave, I think you had to boss up because he had planned to do something, you know, whether that was attack you, rape you, hurt you, um, something was going to happen. But I think because you did, like, you had such an explosive reaction, it made him be like, oh, okay, she's going to put up a fight. You know, she ain't going to just let me come up in here and, and take over. So, um, I'm really sorry. I had no clue that you went through all of that. And the sad part is it wasn't just with one person and people like, you got to choose better. How do you choose better when everybody out here is crazy and living a lie? We got people out here who are pretending to be pastors and a man of the cloth and this and that and the other. And you the bishop's grandchild and all this other stuff. And you guys are doing all this. You guys are, you guys are guys. You are men who come from the church. You, you can quote all kind of 
Bible scriptures and you're abusive. You thought you were choosing the best, right? God fearing men who could lead their families in a proper direction. A man who can pray and speak in tongues. A man who knows his word and gets up every Sunday morning and probably leads his family to church. And then you have a drinking problem. You have a cheating problem. You have a fighting problem. Oh, okay. Now you have a stocking problem too. Now you break into people's mama's houses. See how this works, folks. This is deep. I'm sorry that you had to experience all that, you know, but I am glad that you bossed up. I'm glad that you're like, you know what? I don't have to put up with this. I don't have to take this. And you did something about it. You didn't just stay over there and allow yourself to get abused, but you found the strength to walk away. And so I commend you. All right. Commend you. Is there any um, final thoughts before we end our session, ladies? All right. Well, that's all for this episode of Rose City, The After Show. We hope that you enjoy our discussion on episode 29, Malia's Graduation, part two. Don't forget to tune in next week when we will be diving into episode 30, Malia's Graduation, dinner, part one. You want to stay here for the dinner, honey. You want to see that. If you haven't already read it, like, what are you waiting for? You know, do we need to, like, call you up? Do we need to pull up on you? Do we need to ask the question? Because the first three episodes are free on Kindle Bella, so... What you doing? The story is amazing. We know that you'll be hooked. We're hooked. New episodes are being published every week. We love hearing from our readers. So please add your thoughts, your questions, and your theories to the comments or reach out to us on Rose City, the after show on Facebook. All links will be provided in the description. Thanks for tuning in. We'll see you again next week in Rose City.